Hey guys and welcome to Petrolped and welcome to a very special lineup of Jaguars. An XKR, a Jaguar Project 7 and a Jaguar Project 8. Now a few weeks ago I was contacted by a very very special peddler and subscriber, a lovely guy called Mike who said look I've got all three of these um, if I were to put you on the insurance for the day would you like to come along and drive them? And I thought about it for about a nanosecond and bit his arm off. So in this video, in fact, this is the first of two videos I'm going to do. So you need to make sure you tune into both of them. In this video, we are going to experience the Jaguar Project 7. I cannot wait for this. Now then, long-term subscribers to the channel will probably know I do have a little bit of a thing for a Jaguar F-Type. I think they are beautiful, beautiful cars to look at, but the F-Type V6 was one of the first, if you like, premium sports cars I ever reviewed on the channel, and I've been lucky to drive pretty much all the variants of F-Type. I've driven the V6, I've driven the V8, I've driven the 2.0-litre, and I've driven the SVR. But there are two F-Types that have eluded me so far. I haven't driven a convertible and I haven't driven the Project 7. So I'm going to tick off both of those in the same car. Now, a little bit of history about the Project 7. Um, there were only 250 of these made worldwide and only 80 of them in the UK. So they are a pretty special car in terms of rarity. The other thing about this car for me is Underneath the bonnet is an immensely powerful supercharged 5 litre V8, but it's what comes out the back of this car. Because one of my favourite sounding cars I've ever driven is a, an F-Type SVR. Those things are biblical. They will wake the neighbours from three or four miles away. But this is even louder than one of those. It's a different exhaust, it's tuned in a different way, and by all accounts it is pretty special. Oh, <laughs> you see. I'm excited and I do feel bad because I'm not actually going to drive this XKR which was Mike's first car so his Jaguar journey kind of started with this although in the garage there is a beautiful XJS convertible which again I haven't got the time to do justice to today maybe I'll come back but let's talk a little bit more about the car in front of us this Air Project 7 and maybe we'll start off with what's underneath here what's underneath this bonnet because it's pretty special. I've always loved the big clamshell bonnet of the F-Type. I think it just adds a sense of theatre when you go into the engine bay. So all of these cars share the same basic 5-litre supercharged V8, but just clearly with different variations of tune. This particular car has 567 bhp, 516 foot-pounds of torque, all through the rear wheel, so rear wheel drive. I'll talk about the gearbox and the transmission when I'm driving. Um, 0 to 60 time is quoted at 3.8 seconds. I won't be trying that today. And onto a top speed of 186 miles an hour, which again, I won't be doing today. And interestingly, if you've got the roof up, you are speed limited to 120 miles an hour because one of the things, the roof mechanism in these is pretty Heath Robinson. This is a car to be driven when the sun's out on a dry day with no roof. The, the roof itself, I'd never seen a Project 7 with the roof up, but when I arrived and it was under, under wraps, Mike took the roof off and it's quite a kind of, <laughs> quite a process to take the roof off. And they are so beautiful once the roof is gone, that bulge behind the driver's um, seat just sets the car off beautifully, but oh, it's a very, very special car, this. Now I'm going to make a really big statement here. It's a pretty bold one and I'm sure I will be shot down in the comments for it. But I think the Project 7 is the best looking modern Jaguar that they've made. I honestly think it's beautiful. It started off from a very beautiful base car. The F-Type's a good looker, right? 
but I just think the way it's been done, one of the big standout features of the Project 7 compared with a normal F-Type is the, re the windscreen has a much, much sharper rake on it, giving it a much sleeker look. And then at the rear, I think the view you're looking at, that rear three quarter with the spoiler, the quad exhaust, the bulge behind the driver's seat, I just think it looks beautiful. And I know where we're parked at the moment, it's difficult to kind of get some long shots, but I'll do that once we're out and about, we'll park up somewhere nice and get some arty photos. But yeah, just a beautiful, beautiful car. So if I just close the bonnet down, it's very, very nearly time to go and drive the Project 7. Okay, you join me in the Jaguar Project 7. I am pinching myself quite a lot. For the first time in a long time, I'm actually using a lapel mic just to see if that helps with the audio. But I'm currently in uh, somber, quiet mode and I'm not gonna stay in that for very long. So basically, the first thing I'm gonna do is stick this car into dynamic mode. Pull this little switch down here and that's instantly gonna put me into dynamic mode and it's also gonna turn the noisy exhaust button on and then apparently to go ultimate asbo you put it into sport mode and i'm now oh my goodness me <laughs> oh yeah now one of the wonders of this car with it being built in 2015 is it was built It's not even warmed up yet, and it's being an Asbo, is it was built <laughs> before the terrible thing that was an OPF filter. Oh yes, I love this car already. What a machine. So the plan is I'm going to head out towards a road that I and you know really well because we're not that far from my favourite Oxfordshire reviewing road, the road that I drove the GT2 RS Porsche on and then also I've driven the MG Abingdon edition on it too. We're starting to get a bit warm now and a bit fruity. I love my job sometimes, you know, I really do. But what I want to say, and I normally say this at the end of the video, but I definitely want to say it at the beginning whilst many of you are still watching, is I just need to thank Mike. What an amazing, amazing guy. He's had Jaguars for years. Started off with an XJS, and obviously he's now got the Project 7 and the Project 8, but for someone to reach out and say, come and drive my cars, is very very special and actually i've initially went back and said look because of the coronavirus we can't mate because you'll you'll want to come out in the car and you know I, we can't do that because of social distancing and he went no no i don't think you understand that's why i've got you insured on the car so you can go out on your own so to basically allow me to come out on my own in this car is amazing Oh. Oh. Driving through a built-up area in a Project 7 is one of life's great pleasures. I thought the Mustang was in need of an ASBO. This thing, next level, absolute next level. It's now properly warmed up and we are but a couple of miles away from one of my favorite bit of roads. And I'm starting to get a feel for it and that is ridiculous. <laughs> So once 
once we break out of this 40 mile an hour limit into some open territory this bit of road's lovely and i should get more of a feel for the car now i'm i've driven a, an f-type svr full bore around the goodwood motor circuit and and i kind of know what it can do although the svr is a four-wheel drive platform this is just rear wheel drive but on the public road in a very valuable car like this that isn't mine and the owner's been kind enough to insure me for the day and let me have a go i'm clearly not going to push on too much but i do want to just have a feel what it's like in a more dynamic environment and i really do want to hear that exhaust but the other thing that's different about the Project 7 compared to a standard F-Type, although it's got the normal ZF 8-speed gearbox, the, the way that this has been calibrated is very, very different to all of the other F-Types. It's a quicker change, it's slightly different in terms of the response to map it to the increased performance of the engine. And it should make for a sharper, more engaging gear change and more engaging drive. Right then, we ready? <laughs> now, the traction control light was coming on through most of that. The soundtrack out the back of this car, wow! Oh, it's got a lot of power, this. Oh my God. What a thing. <laughs> now in my Mustang review, many people said, I said, oh my God, oh my goodness. And most of my sentences started with, oh my. And I don't think this review is going to be any different. Hopefully you'll hear me. I am glad I'm using the lapel mic, although until I get home, I don't know whether that will have worked. It's quite blustery in here. Goodness only knows what it's like doing 186 miles an hour with the roof off. I've got the side windows up just to cut down on the fluttering, but look at this road! This car is a masterpiece! The steering's got a nice weight to it, it's got so much power! The torque and the power just pull you out of the corners! And the soundtrack, oh, oh! <laughs> Both on the upshift and the downshift! down into third I'm gonna go down it don't need second but and then The Jaguar Project 7. What a motor. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> Let's just take stock. The, the engine is savage. The, the note that's coming out the back. As I said, the exhaust is very different to even the SVR which is a step above a standard V8R. This thing, next level. Now, I think for me, one of the best sounding v 8 you can get is probably from Italy, from Marinello. But as putting those to one side, this has got to be one of the best sounding cars I've ever driven. It's absolutely raucous. It doesn't have the supercharger whine of the Mustang I drove last week. It's far more raucous than that. And actually, the, the real noise and theatre comes in post sort of 3000 RPM. You need to have quite a bit of throttle on. And then when you upshift, the cracks that come out the back and on overrun, going down through the gearbox, you've got these pops and crackles on overrun. The kind of thing we had in cars five years ago, and sadly emissions laws have meant that we just can't do it anymore. But for me, that was the theatre of the SVO project cars. Anything from special vehicle operations. You know, the first Jag the F-Type SVR I drove, the, 
um, when I drove the Range Rover Sport SVR. They were just biblical things. And then the F-Pace SVR, when I got in that, I was very disappointed because all of the theatre had gone because of emissions. Not in this, my friends. I mean, through this tree canopy, here we go. It's, and the other frustrating thing is, it will not come out on camera just how unbelievable this car sound is. I want more. <laughs> Just listen to this, ready? It's just mega, absolutely mega. So, yeah, <laughs> lost for words, my friend, lost for words. It's a pretty intimidating car to drive. Interestingly, I don't think as intimidating as the Mustang the Steeder Mustang I drove last week. But I still know that this car, if you didn't pay it the right level of respect, would bite you and bite you really hard. Um, the thing I loved about the F-Type SVR is it was four wheel drive, and that just gave you just a huge amount of stability. You could easily go for a naught to 60 test because you had so much traction, uh, it was fine. But this thing, If you don't pay it the right amount of respect, you're going to be in big trouble. Or oh, really big trouble. So, it's not often you can say the following words, but now I've experienced the Project 7, let's head back to Mike's house and jump in the Project 8. Safely back in one piece, and what an experience that was. Safe to say that the Project 7 didn't disappoint in any way. What a car. Huge amounts of power, you have to be mighty careful, especially in dynamic mode, a little bit less traction control, so you get a little bit more slip at the back, so you just need to be on your A game. Probably wouldn't want to drive it like that in the wet, if I'm honest. But just such a lovely driving feel. The thing I didn't mention was the carbon ceramic brakes absolutely amazing stopping power but yeah it's been a long wait since i first saw the seven come out and i've always wanted to drive one and only such a small number of cars in the world 250 cars worldwide only 80 in the uk i am super lucky to get to drive one and i have to say a massive thank you to mike for letting me play with his baby but it's not over there this video may well be over but what I'm gonna do right now is jump behind the wheel of the Project 8 and take that up the road for a spin. And there's not many people can say that they've done that. They go from a Project 7 to a Project 8, but that's what I'm about to do. So you need to make sure you tune in to the next video after this one that will drop on Monday evening at six for the Project 8. For now, for this video, for the Project 7, that's it. I have to say a massive thank you to Mike again for letting me play with his baby, but I hope you've enjoyed this one. If you have done so, please give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome, and if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petroped for plenty more content to come. And I'll see you on the next film, guys, which is the Jaguar Project 8. You don't want to miss that one. You take care. Drive safe. <laughs>